In this video, we're going to continue with our previous example, except this time we're going to be calculating the pressure losses due to friction in the third section of our pipework. And as we're going to see, here we're going to have turbulent flow. So we're going to begin in exactly the same way. We're going to calculate the velocity in section three of the pipe, and then we're going to calculate the Reynolds number in that section of the pipe. So we know that U3 is just going to be Q over A3. Q is given as 0 0.02, and the area of that section of pipe is going to be pi times the radius of that section of pipe. Well, the radius in this case is going to be 20 millimetres because we have a diameter of 40 millimetres. 20 divided by 1,000 to convert to metres is 0 0.02, giving us a velocity in section 3 of the pipe equal to 15.915 metres per second. So next we can calculate our Reynolds number in pipe 3. Reynolds number is rho ud over mu, or rho u3 d3 over mu. So we have 810 times 15.915 times the diameter in metres, 0.04, all divided by the viscosity of 0.08. And this time we get a Reynolds number equal to 6446. Now as we're going to see in a moment, whenever we have turbulent flow or transitional flow, we need to determine an additional variable before we can find our friction factor using the Moody diagram. And that additional variable is something called the relative roughness. Now the relative roughness is the surface roughness of the pipe material divided by the diameter of the pipe. This value of epsilon is basically a measure of the size of the asperities on the surface of the material. If we look at any material under a microscope, the surface is never completely smooth. Instead, it would have peaks and troughs, which are known as asperities. And this value epsilon is a measure of the average size of these asperities. And it's usually given in millimetres. So in this case, we can see that our value of epsilon is 0.18 millimetres. So because relative roughness is a ratio, if we're going to use our epsilon value in millimetres, then we must use our diameter in millimetres. The alternative would be to convert both to metres, but we would arrive at exactly the same answer. So therefore, because epsilon is given in millimetres, and our diameter is also given in millimetres, it makes sense to use that as our unit. Therefore, the relative roughness in this case equals 4.5 times 10 to the minus 3. And relative roughness doesn't carry any units. So let's make a note. We have a Reynolds number of 6446, and we have a relative roughness of 4.5 times 10 to the minus 3. For simplicity, we're going to round each of those. So we're going to say that we have a relative roughness of 5 times 10 to the minus 3, or 0 0.005, and a Reynolds number of 6,400. Let's go to our Moody diagram, and then we can determine our coefficient of friction for those two values. Okay, so previously we said that we had a relative roughness that rounded to 0 0.005. So over on the right-hand side of our diagram, we have relative roughness, and our rounded value is 0 0.005. So the way that we use the Moody diagram is by identifying this as our line that relates to relative roughness. 
If we had a higher relative roughness, then we would need to use a line above this. And if we had a lower relative roughness, we'd be using a line below this one. And we can always take values in between if needed. We also said that we had a Reynolds number of 6,400. Now at the bottom of our page, we have our Reynolds number axis. And because this was a log scale, we said 10 to the 3 was 1,000, and 10 to the 4 was 10,000. So we know we're somewhere between those two values. 6,400 then, we have 1,000 highlighted, then we have 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, and we know we're somewhere between 6,000 and 7,000. We can follow that line upwards, and you may need to use a ruler to do this, but if we follow that line upwards, we know this line here corresponds with a Reynolds number of 6,000. What we're looking for is the point where those two lines intersect. So we want the point where the line for a Reynolds number of 6,400, somewhere around here, intersects with the line for a relative roughness of 0 0.005. Once we've identified that point, all we need to do is track left until we touch the friction factor axis. Now we're only ever going to get an estimate from this, but we can still do this with a relatively high degree of accuracy. In this case, I'm going to state that I have a friction factor of 0 0.042. as I can see that there are five increments between 0.04 and 0.05, and I'm sitting very close to the first increment, or the first index mark. So we're going to go with a friction factor of 0.042. We're going to return, and we're going to calculate our pressure loss using the Darcy equation. So we just found, using the Moody diagram, that our coefficient of friction, or our friction factor as it's also known, is 0 0.042. Therefore, from the Darcy equation, we know that our pressure loss is CF 0 0.042 times our density 810 times our velocity squared 15.915 squared times our pipe length now, although we haven't labelled this on the diagram, we'll call this 1.5 metres so that we have a point of comparison with the pressure loss in the first section of the pipe. And we're going to divide by 2 times the diameter, remembering to convert our diameter to metres, so 0 0.04. Now, running that through the calculator gives us a pressure loss equal to 161,566. So converting that to kilopascals, we have 161.6 kilopascals. So when we compare that pressure loss of 161.6 kilopascals with the pressure loss in the first section of the duct of 93.2 pascals, we can see that the pressure losses associated with turbulent flow and higher flow velocities are much greater than the pressure losses due to laminar flow and slower fluid velocities. Fluid velocity has a huge impact on the amount of pressure lost due to friction. So just before we finish this video, let's return to the Moody diagram and discuss how we would go about evaluating transitional flow. Okay, so we know transitional flow occurs at Reynolds numbers between 2000 and 3000. So from the x-axis on this diagram where we have Reynolds number, we have 10 to the 3 which is 1000. The next mark on the axis will be a Reynolds number of 2000, and then we have a Reynolds number of 3000. So our transitional flow, if we trace those upwards, is the shaded region on the Moody diagram or the region represented by this highlighted section here. 
Now what we can see is that the rules for laminar flow no longer apply in that region. So we're unable to use our friction factor by doing 64 over the Reynolds number. And in fact, we'd need to follow the same approach that we've just followed for turbulent flow. We would need to determine the relative roughness of the pipe. We would need to choose the line that related to the calculated relative roughness. Let's say for argument's sake, we found that to be 0.02, so up here. We would then need to follow that line across and use that along with our corresponding Reynolds number in order to determine our friction factor. We can see there if the relative roughness is 0.02 and we have a Reynolds number between 2000 and 3000 for transitional flow, then the friction factor is going to sit somewhere between 0.06 and 0.07. The important thing here is the process we follow is exactly the same as the process that we need to follow in order to find the friction factor for turbulent flow. Once we have the friction factor, we can then apply the Darcy equation as we did for both laminar flow and for turbulent flow.